Hello friends. In today's Tahoma update, I want to show you a feature that's been added to more tools and has been updated to work consistently for all level types, which will make it much easier to choose between the different levels knowing they all have more of the same features. Oh, and stay tuned to the end where I'll show an extra feature added to the eraser tool that I know you'll find really useful. So what is this new consistent feature? Well, it's the new frame range option for performing an action across a range of drawings, but it's now available in more places. So let me show you where you can now use it. So I'll start off by creating a vector level and I'll create 12 new drawings in this vector level by changing the range of drawings from one to 12. And the first tool where you can see the new frame range option is the geometry tool. So let's select that. And straight away on the options bar at the right hand side here, you can see a range drop down box. But I'll select the circle for this demo. So what the frame range allows is for you to draw a shape on one frame, draw the same shape on another frame and Tahoma 2D will fill in the shapes in between. And there's four types of range. So if we open the drop down, we can see the first off, the range is turned off, which means you're putting a shape on one drawing only. Or you can use the linear frame range, the ease in, ease out, or the ease in and out. And I'll show all four in a second, but for now, let's simply choose the linear option to demonstrate the principle. So we'll go to frame one and we can draw a circle anywhere on screen. Let's draw it to the left hand side. And I'll draw it quite small here. And you'll see the circle is drawn as a red circle, even though the ink color is currently black. And this red circle is just a marker of where the first drawing will be on frame one. And if I select the last drawing here on frame 12, I can still see the circle from frame one, which gives me a guide of where I'm going to move from as the interpolated circles are drawn up to drawing number 12 on frame 12. So elsewhere on screen, I can draw another circle and it could be anywhere on screen and any size. So I'll draw it at the right hand side, quite large like that. And as soon as I release my stylus, you see frame one is highlighted again. And now the circle is drawn in the black ink at the left hand side. So now if I scrub through from drawing one through to 12, you'll see the circle getting bigger as it moves towards the right to end up on drawing number 12 at the size that I drew it. Now if I turn on the onion skin, so you can see those drawings there, you'll see the size of the circle and the positioning of them is consistent between each drawing. This is a linear style drawing. And to make the onion skin a little bit easier to see, let me go to the preferences. And in the onion skin section, we can change the paper thickness. So let's change it from 50 to be a thinner paper, which means you can see more of the drawing beneath. So if we go to 20 and then click outside the box, immediately you see the color of the previous onion skins change. Let's go even smaller, perhaps five. There we go. Now I can see all of the onion skins much easier. And you may have used this feature already in the standard brush tool, but now it's available in the geometry tool. I think you'll find it much more useful. So let me show you what those four different types of ranges actually look like on screen. And again, I'll create a vector level for this first example, but I'll also use a standard raster and smart raster level to show some of the different ranges and to show that they can be used on different level types. So to make it easier to add the circles in the right position, I'm going to use a feature of Tahoma 2D called the safe areas. And that's this button here at the top of the viewer, the third one from the left. If I click that, it turns on some safe area guides. And then if I right click in there, you can see a selection of guide types that I've already set up. And you can find a link to these guides that you can download for free from my Gumroad site down below in the description. And I find these really useful for laying out shapes and positions of characters on screen. So do try them out. Okay, so let me just change the size down here. And we'll start with the linear range. And I'll start off in this first quadrant here. And I'll draw a circle about the half the size of the height of that box there. And I'm using this guide just to keep the circles more or less consistently sized as they move across the screen and to better help you visualize what the four different ranges mean. So as before on frame one, I draw the first circle, move to frame 12 and draw the second circle, 
at roughly the same size. And then again, you can see if I scrub through those drawings, the circle moves from left to right. And just to show this works on different level types, let me also create a standard raster and a smart raster level. So the first column demonstrates the linear movement. The next one will be ease in, then ease out, and then I'll add another vector level for ease in and out. So again, on frame one, I'll change the range to be ease in. I'm using the circle type. Let's change the size to be two, so it should be the same sort of size. And then choose the circle shape. And on frame one, I'll draw the first circle. Go to frame 12, and you'll see, I can still see the circle from drawing one. Let's add the final position of the circle. And you'll now see that circle moving across there. And then I'll just add the ease out and the ease in and out as well. So there's four different types of play range. If I change the speed down to be 12 frames a second. So these 12 frames last one second while they play and hit the new loop play button. You can see the four circles moving at a different pace to each other. And if I go to the final frame again and turn on the onion skin and show this for the whole scene by right clicking at the top of the timeline and choosing extend onion skin to scene. So we change the columns to match what is on screen here. We can see the top row of drawings are the circles shown with a linear frame range. So the circles are all equally spaced. The next one down is using ease in. So you can see the circles are wider apart at the beginning and slow down as they ease in to the final drawing. The next one down is ease out, which is the opposite there. So the circles ease out of the first drawing and get wider apart towards the end. And the fourth row is ease in and out. So you can see the circles are easing out of the first drawing, wider space in the center and easing in to the end. And everywhere you have the frame range, you have these four easing options. So the next place the frame range has been added to is the fill tool. And this works in exactly the same way that you choose the type of fill that you want, choose the type of frame range. So I'll choose linear here, I'll add a new color and on the linear range of the circles I can simply click on frame one and then move to the final frame we're on to fill you can see across where I first clicked for the first fill and then click in the final drawing and to home 2d will interpolate between those two positions in a linear fashion to fill those 12 drawings so it's the equivalent of me starting on drawing number one clicking to fill Moving to the right a little bit on frame two, clicking again, frame three, clicking to the right, frame four, clicking again and again. So now if I scrub through those 12 drawings, you should see all 12 circles are filled. Now you can use the normal fill type or rectangular freehand, polyline or the pick and freehand. But generally with a fill tool, I like using the rectangular option. And this means you haven't got to be quite as precise for clicking in a certain area. So if I go to the smart raster level and I'll change this fill type to rectangular, I'll change the frame range to be linear, but it could easily be one of the other types. Let's add a new color to make it green. And then for the ease in and out layer, which is this third row, I can simply draw a rectangle quite large on the first frame move to the last frame and draw another rectangle equally large. And that ensures that all those circles will be covered as they move across the screen. And again, the frame range is on all three level types for the fill tool, which is brand new for raster levels. And on Toon's raster levels is this drop down with the four frame range types instead of the checkbox that we used to have. So the next tool the frame range option is available for is the tape tool which is only available for vector and smart raster levels, not standard raster levels, because Tahoma doesn't know the difference between lines and fills on standard raster levels. And again, you've got the same four options in the frame range box. And on smart raster, this is now a drop down again instead of a checkbox. So you have the full set of four types. 
and the frame range has also been added to the hook tool which I know not many of you will be using but if you are a fan of using the hook tool you might find it easier to apply hooks across multiple frames instead of just applying them one at a time. And finally the frame range is available on the eraser tool so if you choose any option apart from the normal type then you can choose to use the frame range. Let me show you how that looks. So let me add 12 frames for a smart raster level again and I'll use the fill tool in standard mode but I will use the frame range sticking with linear because I'm not actually moving around the screen and I'll simply add a fill color and then on frame one click on the background go to frame 12 click anywhere else on the background and then those 12 frames will be filled with that blue color okay so choose the eraser tool and you can use any of the types apart from normal here so if I choose the rectangular option so to erase some of the background that is drawn as an area so let's change the mode to areas we could leave it on lines and areas that works equally well I change the frame range type to be linear just to show the principle of how this works so on frame one I will draw a rectangle and I'll draw this tall and thin then on frame 12 I'll draw another rectangle at the right hand side and this time I'll make it wide and thin and again immediately after drawing the second rectangle shape the timeline jumps to frame number one and then if we scrub through those drawings you'll see that rectangle changing shape and moving across the screen as to Homer 2D interpolates between those two shapes and again you can choose any of the types here so if I try a freehand shape and this time I will ease in to final position so on frame one I'll erase at the left hand side here just drawing a kind of circle shape then on frame 12 I'll draw a large circle at the right hand side and let's see how that looks let's bring down the play speed again and hit loop play and you see to Homer has added a little bit of rotation around that circle as it moves from left to right and this can sometimes happen so do be aware that you don't always get the shapes moving in precisely straight lines so I said at the start of this video there'd be another new feature of the eraser tool that I know you'd enjoy and it's this the eraser now has pressure on all three level types so you can set a minimum and a maximum size for the eraser and use it to erase large areas and smaller ones without changing sizes just by adjusting the pressure as you erase and this is something I've wanted forever and I think you'll love it and this now brings the eraser in line with the standard brush and the paintbrush tool in having pressure which is another thing that OpenTunes doesn't have so I hope you can see how having the frame range option on more tools on all levels will make these tools easier to use and as they're available for all level types you won't be swayed to use a particular level type just to get the frame range option you'll know it's going to be available so lots more consistency plenty more features so that's the end of my series of videos showing some of the newer features in Tahoma 2D and I hope you can see why I'm finding myself using Tahoma more than OpenTunes recently and I urge you to try it out if you haven't already just remember to download the nightly build from the downloads page if you want to try out all of these features and remember this video was released early and without adverts for my tmug and teapot supporters on patreon and will include this project so if you want to watch videos early without ads and with downloadable content and to get additional exclusive videos that aren't on YouTube then check out my patreon so do try out these new features for yourself keep animating and I'll see you soon for another update about Tahoma 2D. And that's a darren tea.